Hello, this video is for College Algebra 3.6. This is our last section of our function discussion that we've been talking about. Um, so the whole time I've been talking a lot about inputs and outputs and how they relate, that function notation, which is equivalent to the y variable, uh, how we can take that shape and move it around and all of these different things. So we know, of course, that in real life, things aren't always perfect. They don't always form that exact straight line, that perfect parabola, all those kinds of things. Life is messy. So so in this section, we're going to learn how to kind of take some of that messiness and with the use of our graphing calculator, turn it into something that we can kind of follow. So if you don't have it with you right now, go ahead and pause the video, grab your graphing calculator, or some of you guys use that app on your phone while you don't have the calculator with you. Um, so either one of those, pull it up, have that handy. First, we're going to kind of talk about the basics, the terminology stuff like that. And then I'm going to walk you through the exact steps, the buttons you're going to push on the calculator to make this work. So we've said the input and output the whole time, same story. The x value is the independent input variable, which then gives us an a dependent output variable, usually represented by y. Um, when we're looking at these patterns, if we graphed out just our scattered data that we would have had, an input that gave us an output, we have a few different options of what might have happened. Um, so we actually could have had any shape. In this lesson, we're only going to look at linear um, correlations here, just because they're the most simple. We're just kind of hitting the basics. But just be aware that in real life, you could have any shape that might form up to be a parabola or a cubic, or you've probably heard a lot about exponential growth, things like that. And the calculator can actually do all of those, but we'll just start it out with the easiest linear representation. So if we expected our data to form a line, it could have been one of three things. There might have been a positive correlation where we see as one variable increases, the other variable increases as well. It forms a positive slope, just like we've been learning about since the first lesson we might have a negative correlation. Whereas one variable increases, the other variable actually decreases. Our input goes up, the output goes down, and vice versa. Um, and then there is a possibility where you actually just kind of have really scattered data and there's not an obvious trend. So then the other thing we have to look at is how strong is the trend. So this one has a positive correlation and you also notice that these dots almost exactly form a line. So see it's just a little bit below, a little bit above, but it's almost a perfect line. This one is a little bit more scattered. You can kind of see some of the dots are above, some are a little bit further below, but there's still a pretty obvious line going on here. I could put a line through these dots to say this is where the kind of trend is. And then this one, like I mentioned, is just really scattered. So if forced mathematically, you could find a line that represents the minimum distance away from this line. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the mathematical way they're finding this line. But it would be weak. It wouldn't be a really good representation of that data. So just kind of know we have these three options, the positive slope, the negative slope, and then just kind of all over the place. We could have it really close to the line, a little bit more spread out, or just completely spread out. We have a variable that we can use to identify all of this that the calculator, again, nicely finds for us. So when we get to that calculator step, all of this information is going to be given by one specific variable on the calculator. All right, so let's again just kind of talk about the terminology, what's going on with these numbers, what does it all mean, and then we'll look at the actual calculator. So hopefully it makes a little more sense when we get to that step. So first off, would these represent a linear function? Like I mentioned, things could uh, be shaped like a parabola, a cubic, all kinds of basically any shape you can think of. So if we wanted to check that it was going to form a nice pretty line for us, it was going to form a linear function, we need to make sure that as one increases, the other increases proportionally. So what does that mean? Well, let's go see the difference between these x's. So from 0 to 5, there is a difference of five. Five minus zero is five. From five to 10, there's also a difference of five. Five to 10, it goes up by five. 10 to 15, it goes up by five. So notice these are all the same. It's increasing proportionally. Let's see what's going on with the y values, the outputs. So seven to 32, that one is 25 away. So from here to here, they spread out by 25. 32 minus 7 is 25. To get from 32 to 107, how much did those spread out? 
that one is actually 75. So actually right now I know, but let's just triple check 32 or 232 to 107. That was a difference of 125. Now you might say, well, there is a pattern. There is, which would be one of those other shapes, but it would not represent a linear function because they have to increase by the same proportion. Since these each increased by the same five, these would need to each increase by the same number and they did not. So the answer is this one is no, not a linear function. Okay, it is not because these numbers are different. All right, let's try another one. Now this one, zero to five, that again is a difference of five. Five to 10, that's the difference of five. 10 to 15, that's a difference of five. Now this one, it's going down, but that's okay. Seven to negative 18, how far apart are those? Remember that the positive seven would be like above sea level, and then the negative 18 would be down below sea level. So those actually have a difference of 25. I'm on the right thing. Yep. Okay. So it went actually down 25. Okay. From seven to negative 18 is negative 25. If I had punched in and I could have done negative 18 minus seven, just like over here, I would have done five minus zero. Negative 43 minus a negative 18. I know it's a little tricky, but how far apart are these? How far apart are 43 and 18 on the positive side? they would be 25 apart. Again, it decreased, it went more negative by 25. Last one, 68 to 43. Okay, those again went down by the same amount of 25. So these have the same proportion. This one, yes, would represent a linear function because the numbers have the same proportions. Okay, one more. So this one has a little jump. It's a little bit sneaky. From 10 to five, 10 minus five is five. Okay, from 10 to 20, this one had a jump of 10. 20 to 25, this has a jump of five. Now it's not automatically a no, it's just that this data point was further away than these two data points. So remember, it's about a proportional jump, not necessarily identical. So watch this. 24 to 44, that's a jump of 20, right? 44 minus 24 is 20. Okay, what about 84 to 44? That's a jump of 40. And then 84 to 104 is 20. So they have the same proportions. If you went halfway in between these two, there would be that 15, right? And halfway in between these two would be 64, which would be the same 20 apart. So it's not just about them exactly matching because you can find whatever data points you need. It's about them matching proportionally. So since these increased by five, five to 10 to five, these should have increased proportionally. This would be doubled. Okay, so I know it's a little bit tricky. So if you weren't sure, here's how you could double check. This five should have matched up to this 20 in the same way that this 40 would match up to this 10. Proportions, okay? 20 should be to five as 40 is to 10. They should match up. So 20 divided by five and 40 divided by 10 have the same proportion. So the answer to this one is yes. They are both linear um, proportions, linear functions. All right. Now this one down here, we're given the information. They've already kind of gone through the work for us. We're just gonna kind of interpret. So it says the weight of a newborn is 11 pounds and we've followed the, um, the pattern and we found that this baby gained one half pound per month for the first year, okay? So we know that things change as they get older. So this doesn't hold true their entire life, but for their first year of life, Starting at 11 pounds, each month they gained one half pound. Predict the baby's weight after four months. We can probably do this in your head. So we started with 11 pounds, right? We know he's getting bigger. And each one of those four months, he gained half a pound. So it increased by one half pound 
every one of those four months. So that would be another two pounds added onto that 11. The baby should be about 13 pounds now. Okay. So if you did it in your head, you might not have written it out exactly like this, but I put it in this way because if we wanted to represent it as a linear function, we could write it out in the same way. We knew he was gonna start out at 11 pounds, no matter what happened. And every time he grew one month, he would gain another half pound. So I could find it for any number of months, four months, six months, 2.37 months, anything like that, by taking that starting weight of 11 pounds and adding half a pound for any number of months that I wanted. This would give me the new weight of the baby. Okay, so this would be the baby's weight as a function of months. It did specify that for the months, they're gonna use the variable T for time. Okay, a lot of times in XYZ, you might do something like I did right there, put an M for the months. And then when you push enter, it'll pop up and say, you know, even before you hit enter it, it should give you a little highlighted, something's wrong, the variables aren't matching. So just keep an eye out for those little errors. It always tries to kind of give you a hint. So little things like that are really easy to do. Okay, next it says to find the domain and range. So like I mentioned up here, this isn't a good model for the baby's entire life. It was only good for the first year. So that means the domain of this function. Okay, the pattern is only gonna hold, of course, starting from the baby's birth, right? We couldn't go back in time. I expect this pattern probably didn't hold before he was born, negative one years old. And it's only gonna hold until he reaches 12 months old, one year, okay? After that, the baby's gonna follow a different pattern. So it said it was only good for the first year. So then what's going on with the range? Okay, well, to find the extremes of the range, I need to find out what's going on at these two points. So we know what's happening at zero, okay? When he was first born, that was 11 pounds. But I need to see what's the biggest he gets while this pattern is happening. So let's plug in a 12. How many pounds was the baby 12 months later? So let's see, 12 months would be starting weight of 11 plus that one half 12 months later. Okay, that means he'd gain one half of 12 is six. 11 plus six is 17. So the range would be the starting weight of 11 up to his weight at 12 months, which was 17. Okay, then to go backwards, predict the weight. I'm gonna kind of do this, just so we know that this is really part of this question. All right, predict the age in months that the baby would weigh 15 pounds. Now we're gonna go backwards. Instead of knowing the months, we know the weight. So I'm gonna put that 15 in place of the W. So it's still gonna follow the same pattern. Okay, now there's a fraction in here, but don't panic, we got this. Okay, just a little bit of algebra. So we know we have to solve by first moving the constant. That's gonna give me four. Now, if you think about it, you might could even do this in your head. Four would be how many halves? Okay, if you can't think of it in your head, that's okay. You can divide. In your calculator, make sure if you're doing this one half as the fraction that you use parentheses. You also might find it easier to divide by 0.5. Most of you know that one half is 0.5. However you can get there, you should find then that the answer is eight. Four is eight halves. Okay, so eight months later, the baby would weigh 15 pounds. Let's double check. Every time he grew a month, it was half a pound. Eight times a half was four. 11 plus four is 15. So it all works out. Okay, so these are the kinds of things we're trying to represent when we have these inputs and outputs, the months and the weight. How are these things connected? We have a story going on. And this would be a good example of a linear function because the baby was growing the same amount each month. Now, I know in real life that might not really be true of the newborn, but for the sake of this example, that's what we're going with. 
So now let's try our calculator magic here. Grab that calculator. I know this feels like a lot, but don't worry. It's not as bad as it seems. This first step right here, the diagnostics, you only have to do once. And it might even already be on in your calculator, depending on if this has happened in your calculator's life. So the first step here, just like it says, we're going to go to the catalog. So to do that, you'll find the word catalog right here above your zero, but notice it's in the blue or maybe yellow if you have the 83. So you're gonna have to hit the second button. See, it's second and then the zero, just like it says in the instructions right here, second zero. Your screen then should list a whole bunch of stuff there. We're gonna scroll down to where it says diagnostics. You'll notice that there are diagnostics on and diagnostics off. It might take a little bit, but it'll be there. Almost there. Okay, now again, notice that there are both diagnostics off and diagnostics on. So make sure that your arrow is on the one that says diagnostics on. Okay, when you hit enter, it just double checks, that's what you wanted. Hit enter one more time and it should say done. Okay, so we went second zero, scrolled to diagnostics on, enter twice, okay. And now, depending on your calculator, you may or may not have to do this. Mine's just already still there. But if you wanted to be safe, it doesn't hurt to go your second quit. That always puts you back on the home screen. OK, so again, this only has to be done once. You don't have to do this every single problem. Once they're on, they stay on. All right, this is the part where you're going to do this every time. So this is kind of your starting point. All right, enter your data. So if we knew some data, instead of it being a pattern like the baby, but we just had some records from previous babies. So we're gonna do this one right here. This is the body weight compared to the heart's weight. So we have some data, I'm gonna put it into my calculator. We're doing just a little bit of statistics. So I go into the stats. So first I want to clear my list just to make sure everything's nice and good. So I go, uh, let's see. Sorry, I didn't really have that step there. Yeah, sorry, there's just a little bit of a step here. So we do just a little bit of statistics. So you do hit your stat button. Okay, so I hit stat and then I go there to edit. Okay, so it's not really written in the instructions there. So enter the data, I go to stats, edit. Okay, so this is the clear the list part. So just like it says, we're going to go up. So if there's some data in there already, like mine, I go up, clear, enter. So I went up and then I hit my clear button and then enter and notice it's going to empty it out. Okay, a lot of times people just try to put the data back on top of that, but then they keep those last few numbers in there that don't apply to their new data and it messes things up. So make sure that you get in the habit of doing this every time. Up, clear, enter. And it should have a nice blank list now. Okay. All right. So back over to list one. I'm going to put in the body weight, these numbers here. Always be careful. Okay. It's really easy to mistype something and that's going to throw off your numbers. So 281.58, enter. It'll go down to the next line. 285.03, it has it right there, but then when I hit enter, it goes down to the next line, 290.03, enter, 295.16, enter, 300.63, enter, 313.46, enter. Okay, should have all those numbers now on list one. I always kind of double check by counting how many numbers there were. This had one, two, three, four, five, six values. And in my calculator, I have one, two, three, four, five, six values, just because it is easy to misalign. So then I arrow over to list two and enter these numbers here, 1 1.0353, 1.0534, 1.0726, 1.1, 
Okay, after I've got all those in, they should match up. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Feeling pretty good. If you're unsure, if your fingers sometimes mistype things like mine do, you can kind of just run through it one more time, make sure all those numbers look right. Okay. All right. So that was entering our data. So we went to stat, edit, put it all in, making sure we cleared things out first. All right. Next, we are going to calculate. Okay. So this one, I go to that stat again, and I can go right from this page. I don't have to clear it out. So I go stat. And this time, instead of the edit, I go over to the calculate. So I use my arrow button to come over to calculate. Okay, I have all the options there. And like we've talked about, there's all those different shapes. You can do cubic and quartic and exponential regressions. But the only one we're worrying about for this chapter, this lesson, this, um, this course is going to be the linear regression. It should be option four, lin reg right there. Okay, hit enter to select. And then it has some options depending on your calculator. It may have a nice pretty screen like this one, or it might have it more just on your blank page there. So hopefully it should uh, guide you through it. It says you can do other lists. So maybe if you had multiple things going on and you wanted to keep a list of numbers in there, you could select different list. If you happen to need to do that, all you have to do is hit second and the number, see there's all our list there. So say I wanted to make it list three, I would just hit second three, and that would change it to list three. I want them to be list one and two, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. Frequency should be blank. The store equation is gonna be blank. There's something else we can do with that, but we don't need to. So I just scroll on down to calculate. So once I selected number four, I didn't need to change anything unless I wanted to do different list. I just scroll down to calculate, enter, and there it is. So you get a screen full of information, but what does it all mean? So here should be exactly the numbers on your screen, sneak preview of what you got. Okay, so here's what it is. It says, I've given you the equation, but since all of the numbers are so detailed, I didn't wanna overwhelm you. So I put it in a row for you. So it says, we're gonna make this linear equation, y equals mx plus b, just like we're used to, where this is the m, this is your a, and this is your b, okay? So let's write that out. In its nice, pretty, messy form, that would be an a of, I'm gonna write the whole thing, okay? Usually there are rounding instructions in the problem, but just to be very, very thorough, I'm gonna write this whole big messy thing out. X plus the B, KB, which is a negative 1.11311848448. Okay, this is the whole big messy linear equation given by our calculator. Okay, so when I was mentioning all of these options up here, I said there's one nice pretty number to tell us what's going on, and that is the R. So it's R for correlation coefficient. That would be this last one. Be careful because there is an R and an R squared. We want the R, okay? The R is our correlation coefficient. So that R, which was 0. Point, oops, sorry. Nine. Okay, here we go. Nine, eight. That's right here on the screen. Sorry, trying to do too much at once. Okay, so is that number the nine, eight, five, one, eight, one, five, five, eight? Okay. Typically, it's going to ask you to round that to four places, so it would cut it off right here. So you would enter it into X, Y, Z as point nine, eight, five two, because that eight would round him up to a two. Okay. All right. So this number, this correlation coefficient tells us two things. If it is positive, just like a positive slope, we find a positive correlation. Okay. You should also see this represented by the A. If R is positive, A would be positive. If R is negative, A would be negative. So R represents the 
type of slope, positive or negative. But it also tells us kind of in general, uh, really layman's term, um, the goodness of the line. So this one is really roughly a 98% good line. Okay, so it's not exactly that, but kind of think of it in that way. So that means we're always going to be limited to 100%. So you would never have an R value that is higher than positive one or lower than negative one. Okay, the negatives mean that it had a negative trend, but it would always stay between 100% and negative 100%. You would never have a number higher than one or negative one. Okay, so this one is a really good line. Things are lining up really good because it's basically 98% good. Something like this would have a correlation coefficient, maybe like 0.4, okay, something really bad. This one, like ours, would have something like that, 0.98. This one would be a little bit more spread out, maybe like a 0.8. OK, so the correlation coefficient shows how good it is. And then this one, I almost messed up, since it was negative, would actually have been a negative 0.8. All right. So what do we do with this information? We're going to use it to do two things. We're going to predict the heart weight for a certain gram weight of the rat. And we're also going to go the other way and predict the weight of the rat knowing his heart's weight. Okay, since these things tend to line up, we should be able to closely predict how one affects the other. Here we go. So if we knew the heart's weight, okay, that was our Y value over here. Oh, sorry, if we wanted to predict the heart weight, that's the Y value. And we knew the body weight, that is our X value, our input. So I'm gonna use this big messy equation right here and input 330 into X. Okay, so I'm going to type in my calculator. Y equals 0 0.007. And we're gonna round this to, let's see, four places is typical. Seven, six. Okay, round it to four places. We're gonna put in that body weight of 330. And then we're going to plus a negative minus 1.1131, rounded to four places. Okay, punch that into your calculator. And you should get 1.3949. Okay, 330 is higher than this number. 1.39 is higher than this number. It should all fit together. Okay, if they gave us an example to plug in that was between these two numbers, I would expect the answer to be between these two numbers. It should all fit together. Last one, what if we went the other way? What if we knew the, um, the rat's heart's weight and we wanted to predict the rat's body weight? So this time I know the Y value. 1.2 equals 0.0076. But this time it's left as the variable x minus 1.1131. Notice I just did this minus instead of a plus minus, okay? Just because we know if we add a negative, we're really just subtracting, okay? Now it's just a little bit of algebra. Don't get scared by those decimals because you've got your handy dandy calculator. So we're just gonna solve this by first moving the constant. Three, one. It's going to give us 2.3131. And then last, we'll just divide by this crazy decimal, 0076. Be careful with those zeros. It would be really easy to mistype as 0 0.076 instead of both of them. That's a zero. That's a six. There you go. Okay, and that should give you 304.355, and we'll round it again at four places, three. Okay, 
So like I said, it would be really easy to miss one of these zeros. If you did so, your answer would have been off by a factor of 10. You would have gotten 3,000 or 30 or something like that. So again, just kind of double check your answer with what you've got. So 304 is in with these numbers. 3,000 or 30 would have been suspicious because that's way different than these numbers. 304 seems right. Let's go match it up. 304 would be between these two. And sure enough, 1.2 is between these two, it fits in just where it's supposed to. So I feel good about these answers. I feel pretty good about the calculator. So when you get to these steps, it seems like a lot those first times, just kind of come back to the end of this video, maybe rewatch me going through those steps. Remember, you only have to do this one time. These are the ones you will repeat, okay? If you ever have questions, always feel free to ask me. You've got this.